Hi everyone, it's time for a new video tutorial. This time I'm recording with my new microphone, AKG C414, which makes no difference to you whatsoever, but it's my new favorite toy, so why not? I also sound like a chain smoker right now. I've been dealing with some nasty seasonal allergies here in Los Angeles, and I've been waiting for it to go away so I can do this video, but it's not happening, so let's just go with it. Uh, everybody already thinks I'm a Russian spy, so I'll just say it's my Russian spy voice. Okay, on to serious business. Uh, a couple of months ago I made a video about implementing adaptive music in Angry Bots Unity game using FMOD Studio. Uh, if you're interested in the FMOD implementation, I put a link in the description so you can watch that video. Well, I've been wanting to make a tutorial on how to achieve the exactly same result using the Fabric plugin for Unity. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fabric, it's a pretty cool audio toolset for Unity. It has quite a lot of features for music and sound design, and it's quite easy to integrate into a Unity project. I have used it on a couple of projects so far, and I'm really digging it. So basically what I'm going to show you is how to set up Fabric in Unity from scratch, and how to make it play interactive music based on whether the player is in combat or not. And this turned out to be a pretty long video, so I'm going to make a two-part series out of this. So here we go. I already created the new Unity project and imported the Angry Bots Unity package into it. Uh, I also imported my music files. Here we have the exploration loop, which will play while the player is exploring. And here is the combat loop, which will fade in on top of the exploration loop during combat to add intensity to the music. I also have two stingers, which will play once uh, when the combat starts in order to cover up the transition and add a bit of excitement. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the fabric package to our project. Just go ahead to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and browse to the location of the fabric package on your computer. Click Open, then Import. You will need to get the Fabric package from the Tasman Audio website, and I put the link in the description. Go ahead and check out the website for more information about Fabric and the licensing structure. Uh, the cool thing is that it is free for indie games and academic settings, so you can totally get it and play around with it. Now Fabric has been added to the project assets. There's also a handy Fabric menu for adding Fabric components. Uh, the next thing we need to do is create the main uh, Fabric Manager object, which will be responsible for all audio functionality in the game. Uh, basically, the game or code in the game will tell Fabric to do something, and Fabric will play the appropriate sound. And the way that the game can talk to Fabric is through events. Another way to look at it is if you want any sound to play, you will need to create an event for it and call the event at some point. Uh, of course, multiple sounds can listen and respond to the same event, and vice versa. A single sound can be listening and responding to several different events. Here we just want to play some background music, so let's create an event for it, and we can do that in the main Fabric Manager game object. Let's create an event called Music. Okay, so now we have an event, but still no sound that is listening for this event. We need to add a fabric component that will play the sound. Um, I'm actually jumping ahead here just a little bit, but I'm going to create a group component first, uh, since this is generally a good practice. You can think of groups as submixes. You can create groups called music, sound effects, voiceover, etc and balance the levels independently. Just makes your files much more organized and easier to deal with and mix. Um, so I will create a group called music and all of my music objects will live inside this group. Then I will create a timeline component and call it gameplay. If you just want to play a single music loop, you actually don't need to use the timeline. But in this case, I want to create adaptive music using the layered approach. So the timeline component works great for that. Now let's open a timeline editor. Uh, as you can see, Fabric provides several new editor windows inside Unity. So here's our empty timeline. Let's add one layer of music for the exploration loop. This is a new empty layer, so let's create a region inside it. If you have any experience with FMOD or WISE, uh, this should look somewhat familiar. I will just set the dimensions for the region to fill in the entire width of the timeline. Uh, it's actually not necessary in this case, but I have OCD 
and I think it looks nice. <laughs> so back in the hierarchy, you can see that new objects have been added. Exploration layer inside the gameplay timeline and exploration region inside the layer. Uh, but we still don't have any sound. Uh, let's go ahead and add the basic fabric component for playing a sound called audio component. Name it. Drag your sound file in the audio clip box and check loop to make sure that the sound will loop and not just play once through. Now our gameplay music object still doesn't know when to start playing, so we need to attach an event listener. Click on Add Component, Fabric, Events, Listener. And in the event name, select Music. If you remember, we created the music event in the beginning, about two minutes ago. Now all we need to do is call the event when the game starts. So we need to create an event trigger. For the sake of simplicity and to make an example, I will just attach the trigger to the main camera for now. Uh, this is probably not the best practice with more complex games, uh, but it works and it's a simple way to do it and to get something going. Again, click Add Component, Fabric, Events, Trigger. Choose Music Event from the dropdown and make sure that it triggers on Start, meaning whenever the game starts, it's going to trigger this event. Now, if I didn't mess this up, the music should start playing when I play test the game. Let's try it. Cool, so this is working. Uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff by just using event triggers and listeners uh, and attach them to game objects, just like we did here. But for some advanced functionality, you might need to write some code. Or, you know, you can ask your programmer and she'll be busy and she'll never get it done. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it like the cool kids and call the music start event from a custom script instead of from the main camera. Uh, first, I'm going to create a new script called Audio Manager. I typically prefer working in C-sharp, but it's a really a matter of personal taste. And since the Angry Bots project is in JavaScript, it's better not to mix and match programming languages in the same game. So let's just go with JavaScript. Double click to edit. And let's add the code to call the Fabric Music event on start. As you can see, we're telling the Fabric Event Manager to post event called music when the game starts. Not so bad, right? Uh, make sure you save the script, then let's go back and add it to the scene. We can just create an empty game object, name it Audio Manager, and attach our Audio Manager script to it. Uh, last but not least, let's remove the event trigger from the main camera and test. Cool, so now you know how to add Fabric to your Unity project and how to trigger a background music loop from Unity, GUI or from a custom script. In part two, I'm going to show you how to make the music interactive and how we can test and tweak the audio mix and behaviors in real time while playtesting the game, which I think is super cool. And hopefully my voice will be better by then. Let's keep our fingers crossed. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful and if you have any questions you can leave me a comment and I will try to answer it the best I can. And you can find more about me and my music on my website at anastasiativana.com. Alright, stay tuned for part 2 and take care!